Okay, in this tutorial, we're discussing 2022 paper two, question four, and it's all about trigonometry. Now, you'll notice, you probably recognize this. One of the proofs we did when we were studying section four in trigonometry was proving tan A plus B. The formula for tan A plus B is in your maths tables on page 14, and alongside it is the formula for tan A minus B. Now, you've studied the proof for tan A plus B. This one is identical, it's just that where there's a minus, where there was a plus in the other proof, there's a minus now. But other than that, it's exactly the same as the one that we've studied. Nonetheless, let's go through this one. In order to start this off, we're going to start off with the left-hand side. We're going to start off with tan A minus B and eventually try and break it down so that we end up with this fraction. The first thing you should do is go to page 13 in your maths tables. In page 13, it tells you that the tan of an angle is equal to the sine of the angle over the cos of the angle. So in this case, I have tan A minus B, and based on the formula from page 13 in the maths tables, that must be equal to the sine of A minus B divided by the cos of A minus B. Just from the formula, the tan of an angle is the sine of that angle over the cos of that angle. And now you want to look at the top of page 14 in your maths tables. There's a formula for sine A minus B, and there's a formula for cos A minus B. So if I simply start with the top of the fraction, I can see sine A minus B. The formula on page 14 in your maths tables says that sine A minus B is equal to sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. And now I want to do something similar on the bottom. The bottom of the fraction is cos A minus B. And if I go to page 14 in my maths tables again, that tells me that cos A minus B can be rewritten as cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. And now, like, so they're two, I think, not two, they're not two troubling steps, but the next step is quite strange. It's quite difficult now. Now you should think about where you're trying to get to. I'm trying to end up with tan A minus tan B over one plus tan A tan B. Seems like we're a million miles away at the moment. But what I would like you to focus on is the fact that there's gonna be a one, the first term on the bottom of the fraction is gonna be a one. So what I'd ask myself now is, how do I turn cos A cos B into a one? This term obviously has to turn into a one. In order to turn anything into a one, you have to divide it by itself. So that's, this is the strange step, and that's the logic I'd follow. Rather than learning that off, that's the logic I'd follow in the exam. I know that this term has to become a one, so I'm gonna divide it by itself. So cos A cos B divided by itself is, is gonna turn into a one. That satisfies, that turns the first term on the bottom of the fraction into a one. Now obviously you can't just randomly divide one term by cos A cos B. If I divide this term by cos A cos B, in order to, to, to be equally fair across the entire fraction, I have to divide everything by cos A cos B. And when we do this, it's all just gonna fall into place and we're gonna end up with our answer. So I'm gonna take the other three terms in the fraction, divide them all by cos A cos B. Sine A cos B, well, I'll just take that one, the first one on the top of the fraction, and I'll divide it by cos A cos B. And we'll see what happens now in a second. On the top of the fraction now next, I have minus cos A sine B, so that's minus cos A sine B, and I'm just gonna divide it by cos A cos B. And then the last one on the bottom of the fraction is sine A sine B. I'm just gonna also divide that one by cos A cos B. And now, it may be, arguably it looks even worse now, but actually we're just about to write down our answer. Cos A, cos, a cos B over cos A cos B is just one. The, here, let's look at the first fraction on the top. The cos B on the bottom and the cos B on the top. The cos B on the bottom divides into the one on the top and you get one. So I'm just left with sine A over cos A, which is tan A, and that's what I's looking for. For this fraction, the cos A is cancel, and you're left with sine B over cos B, which is tan B. This obviously turns into a one, and nothing really crosses out here, but I have sine A over cos A, which is tan A, and sine B over cos B, which is tan B, so basically it's gonna become this. So obviously we'd finish it off like this. The first fraction, the cos B is cancel, and sine A over cos A is tan A. The second fraction, the cos A is cancel, and sine B over cos B is tan B. The whole point is that cos A over cos B divided by itself is a one, and then sine A over cos A is tan A, sine B over cos B is tan B. And so I originally started off with tan A minus B. I've used a few formula and I've ended up with the other side of that equation. So that's your proof.
Okay, and you should make the link then in part A part II, it's directly related to A part I. We're asked to write tan 15 in the form root A minus 1 over root A plus 1. You should cop on to the fact that tan 15 can be rewritten in this form, in the form of one angle minus another. You want to use your special angles here from page 13 in the maths tables. You have two options. You could rewrite tan 15 as tan 45 minus 30 or as tan 60 minus 45. Now it's way easier here if you use 60 and 45 because the tan of 60 is not a fraction, you just get root 3 and the tan of 45 you just get 1. Whereas the tan of 30 is 1 over root 3 and that like it's not wrong but it just makes your life a lot harder. So you should go with tan 15 is the same as tan 60 minus 45. And then I'm just subbing into this. In this scenario, my A is 60 and my B is 45. So from the formula we're just after proving, you just sub in tan 60 minus tan 45 over 1 plus tan 60 tan 45. And if you go to your maths tables or you use your calculator, you'll get tan 60 is root 3 and tan 45 is 1. And then you simply end up with root 3 minus 1 over 1 plus root 3. All I did on the last line was tweak it so that it's written in the exact format that, it, that it's asked for in the question. In part B of this question, we're given the following triangle. We're, we know the angle at C is 45 degrees. We've been told the distance from A to C is equal to the distance from B to C. And we know one side of the triangle is 10 root 2 minus root 2 inside the cert and we're asked to find the distance AC. Now there's a load of different ways of doing this, like one way that I think some students might do is you could split this into two different right angle triangles and go in that direction, but the easiest way to do this question in my mind is to use the sine rule. First of all, they've told me that the distance, from a, the distance AC is equal to the distance BC. In other words, this is an isosceles triangle, so the two base angles must be equal to each other. So I'd start off by just trying to work out what these angles are. 180 minus 45 gives me 135. So these two angles have to add up to 135. And since it's an isosceles triangle, just divide by 2. So each of the base angles must be 67.5 degrees. And now we, we have enough information to use the sine rule. Remember, and the reason I'm using the sine rule here is because I have a non-right angle triangle and I know the length of a side and its opposite angle. That's the trail of thought we'd go through. Remember when we studied the first section in trigonometry, that's how we identify we should use the sine rule. The sine rule tells me that any given side, so in this case 10 over the square root of 2 minus root 2, divided by the sine of the opposite angle, so the side I have is this, and the opposite angle is 45 degrees, so I'm going to divide by sine 45. Well, I know that any side over the sine of the opposite angle is equal to any other side over the sine of its opposite angle. So in this case, the other side in question is AC, because obviously that's what I'm ultimately trying to find. And the opposite to AC is the angle 67.5 degrees. So that's just equal to the sine of, or divided by the sine of 67.5 degrees. So we've subbed into our sine rule, we now just have one equation and one unknown. It's going to be really easy to find our answer here. So the point I left you off was here, and you should realize that we're trying to isolate AC. So to get AC on its own, all we have to do is multiply both sides by sine 67.5. If we do that, we get AC on its own, and the sine 67.5 is now on the top of the fraction on the left. Just plug all that into your calculator, and your answer works out as the distance AC is 10. 